My name's Rolf and I've been involved in EFL for over 10 years, uh, mainly in this country, um, specialising in exam classes. And recently, over the last couple of years, I've been doing some workshops um, in different countries in Europe, uh, teach training workshops, trying to kind of re-motivate teachers who have lost some of their edge. The first thing I need you to do, it's very, very simple. I need you to write on your piece of paper number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Down the side, and please, number one, leave maybe one or two lines. Number two, two lines, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to tell you a little story, and all you have to do is listen. In my family, um, I have a brother and a sister. My brother is much older than me and much stronger than me. So when I was a child, he had control over everything. And I'm going to tell you a very short little story. Just relax and listen. It was Christmas morning, and we ran downstairs to find our wonderful presents hidden under the Christmas tree. My brother immediately started shaking all of the biggest boxes to see what Santa had left us, because we had been so good. The boxes, decorated in fantastic wrapping paper, crashed to the floor as he went from box to box. Finally, my annoying brother, laughing and shouting, found his presents and started opening them while I tried to find mine. I opened my present lying on the floor near the tree and discovered my brand new remote control Ferrari. It was red. My brother picked up the control and threw the car onto the floor so he could play, breaking the front wheels instantly. This was the third Christmas toy broken by my brother. I could not play with at Christmas. Easy short story? Some yes, some no? OK, you're going to hear the story again. You're going to hear it at the same speed. I'm not going to slow down. I will read one sentence. I will tell you the number. I will say the sentence. Then there will be five seconds. And then the second sentence, five seconds, third sentence, five. Da -da 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 -da. This time, I want you to take some notes, OK? There is no way you will get down all the information. And for your notes, don't worry about spelling, OK? Which is unusual for your teachers to tell you this. But I need you to get down the key information. Everyone clear? OK, can you get your pens? One. It was Christmas morning, and we ran downstairs to find our wonderful presents hidden under the Christmas tree. Now, part two, OK? I need you four together. You're going to be a group. You three are going to be a group, and you four are going to be a group. You need to nominate one person who is going to be your writer. Together, you write down one sentence that is grammatically correct. Now, it's very important you listen to everyone, and you make a decision together, OK? And I'm going to give you about well, 12 minutes. So you've got about two minutes each sentence. OK, number one. It was Christmas morning, and we were running downstairs looking for a present under the Christmas tree. It was Christmas morning, I ran out downstairs. It was Christmas morning, there was wonderful presents under the Christmas tree. OK, an original. It was Christmas morning, and we ran downstairs If we look at this sentence, we have different sections. We have, it was Christmas morning. This tells me the time when it happened. We ran downstairs. The action. Tells me an action. To find our wonderful presence. The aim, why did we run downstairs? What does this information tell me about? The location of what? Of the presence. Now, how do I know 
that this information connects to the presence. If we were using a different piece of grammar, how would I connect those two things? Presence, which... which were hidden? hidden. I said hide. Hiden is all right. <laughs> now, what do you call this kind of grammar when you use which were, who were? Uh, <coughs> it's a relative clause. Now, this type, what have I done? I have Contract. shortened it. I have re reduced it. <laughs> <laughs> called a reduced relative clause. Now, which words have I taken out? What kind of word is this? What's it called in grammar? Is it a verb? No. Mm -hmm. It's a pr pronoun. pronoun. And which verb is this? Be. The verb to be. How do you think the lesson went? For its purposes and aims, it, yeah, it progressed nicely. It achieved, I think, pretty much what I expected it to. Could you just expand on that? The lesson has two main aims, one of which is to enable the students to use and understand a piece of grammar, mm -hmm. kind of grammatical structure. And in that aspect, it was, it was achieving what I hoped it would for the stronger members of the class, but the weaker students, I think, needed a little bit more structured, traditional um, examination of the structure to get used to it. And the second one, which is a little bit more abstract, is about getting the students to become aware that they are able to use grammar without actually knowing they're using it. So that was the dictogloss part of the lesson. Could you just explain dictogloss? Um, yep, yeah, I, I use a, a slight adaptation. Uh, dictogloss is a kind of dictation and the difference is that students get to hear things one time and at very natural speed. It's very important not to drop the level and they sit and relax and try to gather as much information as possible. Then they hear it again one sentence at a time and this time they can take notes but again it's at natural speed so they don't have a lot of options for getting all the words down so what they do is they filter it and they take the words that they can understand and the ideas they can understand. Then they go back together into groups and reconstruct using all the separate little pieces that each of them has gathered. And they each gather different things. And as they discuss, they learn to understand what it is they've heard. So you use dictogloss in this lesson, you use the story to introduce the grammar and, and you do this quite often, but what other kind of ways do you introduce grammar? I'm I'm a, a real kind of proponent of, of not letting the students know what we're going to be doing <laughs> before we actually do it. Yeah. Um, I can introduce grammar. We, we do quite a lot with um, newspaper articles, which I've already selected, which have that piece of grammar in. And we deal with it just as a topic and then look at it in terms of grammar. Songs, um, clips from movies, videos, DVDs, um, and the typical approach of using a basic course book or something as well, just for variety. So as many different ways as I can possibly use. The next question, a bit of a dangerous question come out because I'm not, <laughs> I have no idea what your answer is going to be, but it's a question we've been longing to ask you. Do you get on with your brother? <laughs> I do. The story is totally fictional. <laughs> Absolutely fictional. Um, I found that students respond better to stories if they feel real. And rather than a, a construct from a book which has characters which have no basis for the students, the students spend a lot of time with you and they build up some kind of rapport. Um, but no, my brother was absolutely lovely and he never broke any of my toys. <laughs>